Hey guys, welcome to part two of the stat type uh, editor reimagining. Um, anyway, in the last uh, video, we uh, added our stat type window and made it so we can add some stat types and remove them with a nice little delete dialog box popping up. So that wasn't much. We just had ideas and add and remove. So let's actually go in and make it so all the properties show up correctly and that we can actually edit the stuff that's worthwhile. And then after we get all that in, we'll go in and do some extra editing to make it actually look decent. So let's jump into our on GUI to start doing some of the coding for displaying the information. So we have our icon, our name, short name, and description that we all need to be able to change. So I'm going to start with the icon because a little bit of formatting later it'll become the first element you see on the screen. But just so we, you know why I'm kind of going out of order. So we want to change the icon. To do that we're going to use editor GOI layout and we're going to be using an object field. This takes pretty much any object type in Unity and gives us a field for it. It's pretty simple and you'll see a uh, styling later. Right now when we do this it won't look that amazing. So we'll go asset icon and the type of the object that will be inside this which is sprite. And another field we want is do we want to allow scene objects? And I do not. So we're going to do false here. Like this would be great if you wanted like an asset inside of a scene and you wanted to toss other stuff in here. That'd be nice. But for us we're doing as files that are saved outside of scenes. So we don't want that at all. So now this returns an object type of uh, object. And we need a sprite. So we need to typecast this to sprite. So the next two, or three, are almost identical with a few short differences. So we're going to go asset dot name, and this is going to do the same, editor GUI layout dot text field. And all this takes is asset dot name. Now, each one of these fields you can actually do a label. So Let's just do the label for now. Later editing, we're going to actually change this around, and we won't use the label. You can if you in you want in your own, but I'm doing it a little bit differently later on. But let's continue. Name short. Actually, I'm just going to copy paste. Copy paste this twice. Short. There's that, and then description. Now the main thing we're going to change here is the description. It's not going to be a text field. It's going to be a text area. Now what's the difference between text field and text area? Well, let's go over to our editor and you should be able to see all this stuff now. See this? Editor, stat type, here. Well, besides getting an error, which you can't, the text area actually doesn't have a label if I remember right. It just takes the string. Just takes a string. That's one difference. There we go. And let's see, did I have that? Yeah, I do. Okay. So, name. We can just fill anything. And let's say, let me copy this. Blah, 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 blah. It just keeps going on and on to the right for as far as you want. You can restrict it, I believe, to a set amount. Whatever. And description, it keeps going to the right as long as you want. But if you hit enter, you can add different layers. So that's a text area. Text field, you can't go down. It's not worth worth going much. So if you have a long description, multi-line, there you go. And I believe we can limit our description so it actually has some um, word wrapping. So it actually break down to the next line. We'll see how to do that later. So you see our icon has this box for icon. We can set up stuff and show here. So what happens if I dock this over here 
and then run the game. And then unrun. Well, looks like everything's everything works. Ah. That's not always supposed to happen. But here. In case that doesn't actually happen all the time for you, let's see about actually saving this and making sure it saves correctly. So we want to use editor GUI dot begin change check. This will check if any of these values change. If any of them do, we want to use the editor GUI dot change check. So if one of these values change, this will return true. So we'll wrap this into an if statement. So if this returns true and one of these values change, we know we need to save our our asset. So we'll go editor utility dot set dirty. And we'll set the RBG stat type database dot instance to dirty. So it knows to save. There. That saves all of that. Now let's jump into some editing real quick. So this displays everything we want, has a majority of the functionality we want. Actually, it's missing one thing. I wanted it each one of these. I wanted only one of these to fold at a time. Well, you could keep it like this if you want. I'm going to change it a little bit. And also, these don't scroll. Like, we don't have a scroll bar, so if you add too many, it just goes off the window, and you're kind of screwed. So let's go in and add a scroll field and our toggle. Let's do the scroll field first, because that's pretty easy. So outside of our for loop, we'll go editor GUI. Um, actually, let's go GUI layout dot scroll. Begin scroll view. And this takes a vector to scroll position. So we can create that. I'm just going to do a quick action and generate the field at the top. So vector2 scroll position. And this begin returns a vector2. So this is the change in position. So we'll assign our scroll position to whatever happened during this frame. Now, if we start a begin element, we need to do an in element. And right before our add type, we'll go UI layout dot in scroll. And the scroll element auto expands to fill up as much room as possible. So this will push our add type all the way to the bottom of the screen, which is actually where I want it. So we come back here and you should be able to see everything change. There you go. We got a scroll bar on the right and we have add types at the bottom. So we can just keep adding types and it'll go onward and onward. So let me delete some of these. There we go. Cool. Now let's add the toggling feature that I wanted. So we come in here. And all this information here, I want to be toggled. So before this, and I want my toggle before my delete button. So in here, I'm going to go GUI layout dot toggle. And in all honesty, if you wanted, you could use the fold bar. Let's see. I think it's in editor GUI layout dot fold out. Yeah, fold out. This fold out here, if I jump back over here to Unity, and let's see if I can. Okay, you see this little drop down here for these? That's pretty much a fold out. That's what it'll look like. I not I don't really want well, we could use a fold out, but the style I'm going for later we'll be using a toggle for. It may kind of look ugly now, but you'll see once we actually fix the toggle. But we need a bool value whether this is toggle or not. We're gonna take the asset ID, the current ID, and check if it's equal to some value. I'm gonna call this active. ID. 
and I'm going to pass in the content and it's going to be asset.name and that's all we need. Now we need to create this active ID. So I'll come up here, private and active ID. Pop up and toggle will return a bool. So what do we do with a bool? I'm going to say bool clicked equals and below we're going to do a click if save it. So if clicked it does not equal asset.id equals active ID. So if clicked is either clicked on or clicked off then this will be where it comes. So if it's not equal to whatever this is. So in here if we clicked and the first time we're going to be assigning so if clicked is true we clicked it on for the first time and it hasn't been set yet so we'll go active id equals asset.id so then in the other scenario this is the active object and we're clicking off so this is becoming false so we're going to say active id equals negative one So there's that. That's our toggle that we're going to be using. Now what are we toggling? This stuff down here. So how do we do this? We'll just do if active ID equals asset.id. We'll display this stuff including the save information. So we'll jump back into Unity and you'll see how this looks. Well, it kind of disappeared. If we click this toggle here, it'll show our information and if we click it again it'll disappear. It's pretty nice especially if we have multiple objects click here, it'll show this one, go back to two, one that's kinda how I want it to behave. Now let's jump in and actually make this look better. Now let me delete some of these so I can actually kinda say what I want. So first off this ID, this toggle and this remove button, I want all on the same line across the top, just to make it look nice. This icon, I want this box on the left, kind of over here, and I want the name and short name kind of scooted up on the right. And then I want the description box underneath all of that. So this description box can just descend farther and farther. So how, how do we move things around pretty easily in the script? without just setting values straight around. Well, let's start off with our top part. This will also include kind of styling and make it look different. So to make something or several assets go across in one order, we'll use GUI layout.begin horizontal. And you, since it's a begin, we need to do an end. GUI layout.end horizontal. Jump back into Unity. And there we go. This is all in one order, but it still doesn't look that nice. So I'm going to add some styles to it and also make stuff smaller. So first off, I want to make my label smaller. So I'm going to use GLI layout.width. And I'm going to be setting this to 60. So it's 60 pixels wide. I'm going to copy this just because I'm going to probably use it somewhere else. And down here in this button, I'm going to add the width again and make it 30. But I'm also going to add something else to this button. I'm going to change the style using these built in styles called editor styles. And I'm going to call toolbar button because this one looks really nice. If I want to do that, we can go back into Unity and we have our ID over here and we have a small minus button on the right. But our toggle is still not that nice. Let's go into toggle and add the same style. Editor styles dot toolbar button. Because we're gonna have this toggle as a button. And well, there's the button. That's nice. Now, if we actually go in here, 
since I'm having this display as the name, as the content. So if we come in the name and change it to health, it populates. Cool, we know what's exactly here. Now this ID5 isn't really looking that nice because it doesn't have a background. So we're actually going to come up here to this begin horizontal because you can add editor styles to horizontal or grouping objects. So I'm going to add the toolbar. So now, come back here. There. ID is on this toolbar looking object and it looks like it all fits together. That's nice. Now, so these horizontal and there's also a vertical one are great for grouping objects and making them order in a different way. And you can just use them for everyday grouping as well. Let's come down here to our actual asset section and update this to make it look a little bit better. So I want my if I come back here, I want my icon on the left and I want these on the right. So that's kind of a horizontal-ish. It's like one, two, left to right. So I'm gonna do GUI layout dot begin horizontal here. And the description's gonna be at the end, so I'm gonna leave it outside of this horizontal. So there's that. I'm do this, come back, and we see that this isn't how I wanted it. We have the icon, name, and short name. And they're all. We want the short name under the name. So how do we do that? We'll add a vertical group. Come back. And this can be a lot of testing if you just want to make sure everything looks nice. Okay, that's better. I don't really care for this icon here. So let's come through here and just remove the icon name. Do this. And it pops back to this. And it's kind of messy, just weird. So to get that fixed, we come in here and add a GUI layout dot width. And I'm gonna do a width of 72. And a GUI layout of a height. So if, as soon as we add a width and a height to this, it'll pop back to what it was looking like. There's that. That looks pretty nice, right? Now I'm going to change this up a little bit to make it fill up this area a decent bit better. So for the name, I'm going to go GUI, let's see. I'm going to actually add a label for this. That's just going to be name. And it's going to have a width of 80. And then I want this to be indented just a bit. And also, we don't need these names. We could have the label for the short name as well, real quick. So, let's see. I'll bring this back up in Unity. And this will put the names and the lines on different lines. So that looks pretty good. You can keep it like that if you want. But I'm gonna, I want these fields to be indented just as slightly. So in here, I'm gonna go editor GUI dot indent level plus plus. And that will move everything over one, but I want the other objects below it to go back to normal. So I'll just subtract one indentation. And I'll do the same for the short name, jump back over. And there we have an indentation level. Pretty nice. Now let's do one last thing for the description. And this one, I'm going to be adding a, let's see, I want a horizontal group here. Again, horizontal. And I'm going to do a GUI layout.label. This could be description. And it's going to have a width of 80.
And I'm gonna end my GUI layer, or in my horizontal group. It's pretty nice. I could probably extend that farther so it lines up with everything correctly, but I'll leave it for now. Okay. And then next, I kind of want to make this look a little bit nicer because it, it, it's kind of separated, but not as much as I want. So I'm going to do one last step. For this horizontal, I'm going to add one more grouping. It's going to be a, a vertical group. And in here, I'm going to pass a style that automatically styles it called box. This will kind of give it a box shape. And I'll add a in GUI. Come back here. And there, kind of adds a box to it. Now that way it kind of looks a little bit more separated from the other elements. Cool. Let's see, is there anything else we want to add to this to make it look a little bit nicer or just to change it around? Well, one thing we can do is this health here in the center, you may like it, but if we start adding other things like strength or wisdom. <laughs> oh, and that was another issue that we have. See this? how we have this highlighted and we come down here and still highlight it. We need to fix that. That's a small bug. And also I'm going to move these over and line them up just a little bit. But let's fix that whole selection bug there. That's kind of an annoyance that you may see every once in a while. And also it, it won't show the correct values sometimes. Like let's Let's say, see how this is like, let's say, intellect. Let's say we go up to wisdom. See, still shows intellect for some reason. We want to fix that. So in here, where we're clicking, whenever we click to a new one, we're going to want to clear the active focused element. So how to do that? We go... Editor, let's see. Where's my should be GUI dot focus control and we'll just set that to null. That should fix our issue. So I'll go here and there. We're not focusing on anything when we're moving around, so it's all clear. That's nice. And finally, let's do that custom style real quick. So instead of creating a new style every frame, I'm going to create a two privates up here. Private GUI style. Let's say toggle button style. And a private GUI style toggle button style. So if you're making a full editor, which we are, and we'll probably do this later, you can make all of these custom styles and you'll just do a you can just set them up this direction. So if toggle equals null and we'll just set it up here toggle equals new GUI style. And I'm going to be using the editor styles dot toolbar button as a starting point. And then I'm just going to set a line equals text anchor dot middle left. And I'll just move everything to the left. Then I'll return this. So if you're making a lot of different styles, maybe you might want to make a static uh, class or something along those lines where all of these are placed in it and have this private setup and you can just go get them whenever you want instead of just having it in this in one script. But for now I'm just gonna have one script. It's easy enough. 
And then down here in our toggle, I'm going to replace this with toggle button style. And jump back to Unity, and it should all shift over. There they go. So now they're all on the left, so in smaller windows, it still looks pretty decent. And since some, if we had a type that was really long name, it wouldn't just look out of place completely. Well, it still does, but. Oh, and also this add type down at the bottom, I'm going to be changing its type to because just to make it blend in. Editor styles dot toolbar button. You'll see in future videos that I kind of like the toolbar button look. But I might use it obsessively. But there we go. We got all our types. And we have our add type. We're going to add more, delete them. And they're all saved. So if I go save, oops, save project. Okay, now real tests for editor scripts. I'm going to take this, I save the project, run it, exit play mode, we still have our data, exit unity, don't save, and I'm going to start up unity again. Open the door page. and all our data is here. Great. So all our scripting is good. If you run the game and your data is not there, then you have some sterilization issue or saving issue. And if you exit out of Unity and re-come in and your data is gone, then you have some other sterilization saving issue. So you want to check the, both of those conditions when writing your own editor, when you're working on data, just so you don't lose anything. So you won't have hours of wasted work. Anyway, I'm going to be stopping that video here today. Uh, in the next video, we're going to continue with the stat type one more. Um, we're going to add a custom inspector for this database asset that you can find over here because we don't really want people to edit it through here. We want them to edit it through our editor. We'll do something that hides that. And we'll also do a little dialog pop-up where it will list all of these and return their given IDs or the asset file itself. And along with that, this stat type class or enum we've had, um, it's it's very useful in our own scripts to just go stat type dot whatever. If we use this way, we'd have to toss in the ID or other things, which wouldn't be bad. We could use it. But I kind of want to do a simple generator, which we can click. It'll say click generate stat types and it generates this file because an enum file is pretty easy enough. We'll just use the name and the ID and there you, yeah we'll have all this generated. So in the next video we'll continue with this a little bit longer and we'll finish up our stat types. So till then hope this was helpful and see you guys there.